What's up everybody? Jason, welcome back. Adventure Ready. I go by Adventure Ready now because I've changed all my channels to a version of that like I originally planned and deviated from. So Adventure Ready Off Grid, Adventure Ready Van Life, Adventure Ready Moto. And the only exception I have, I have a channel called Max Transport strictly for my containers because I know some of you guys get tired of hearing my containers on this channel. Um, but I haven't really boosted that thing up or done much for it yet. So anyway, I'm just stopping by to say hello. I'm uh, just got back from a, um, a, I would say a YouTube created uh, meetup. My uh, Adventure Ready Van Life channel is uh, to get people that have off-road lifted um, vans together and go do overland trips and camping trips and stuff like that uh, in the vans. So I just did a, a camping trip with a few guys uh, out at uh, Big Bear, California, where I used to live uh, for several years and grew up uh, using that mountain for motorcycles and Jeeps, things like that, off-roading. It was fun. Uh, we got some hairy stuff with those vans. I'll put some videos on my other channel, the Adventure Ready Van Life channel. Um, and I tell you, um, I, I, it's been a while since I've been up there, so a couple of things I went down uh, it was more my fault. I went down, I'm thinking, um, thinking they were okay and not remembering I used to ride dirt bikes on these are little tiny Jeeps and I'm in a gigantic lifted elephant E350, you know, diesel van with all my camping crap bouncing all over the place. So it was pretty, it was fun. No, no major issues. Um, I had a good time. No murder, death, kill. Did see a bear. Did not get eaten. Obviously I'm here. But uh, anyway, so getting back to my topic here, land. I get asked a lot of my channel, or like older videos have been popping up lately, so I don't know, if, you know how that works with the algorithm. I'm too dumb to figure all that stuff out, and I don't really worry about the kind of stuff on my channel. I basically put stuff out there to share with people and hopefully inspire people, just like people inspired me, um, to you know get into the van stuff and off-roading and motorcycle stuff, and then for this channel, the off-grid living, even though I'm currently living on-grid. But um, I get a lot of uh, questions about land costs. Um, what does your land cost? Or you know, uh, you bought it so many years ago what does it cost now and so on and so forth um i would say when i was buying a lot raw land as opposed to when i bought a house i wasn't concerned about the market value i mean i, I looked at i guess you can say comps and i really didn't look at comps i looked at comparables comps comparable asking prices for x amount of acreage in a certain amount of area i didn't really look at what sold recently what they went for um part of that i was a cash buyer um, I had cash at the time. I usually have some cash, but I, I cash specifically to buy either a home, which I didn't want to do again, or to invest into a property that I would build on, which is, you know, I'm slowly doing, doing a couple properties. But um, so if you're bringing cash in, it's a little bit different on a lot of properties. Most states, I think Arizona is no exception. I know coming from California, no exception. You're not going to get a, a conventional loan of any form on land. And my idea, I had no desire to be in a loan. I'd rather buy a piece of land for a thousand bucks that sucks and know that I owned it just to start putting my feet in the right direction towards independence, some sort of freedom, even though they hit you with a tax ban for here to eternity on that land. That's bizarre and don't understand how they can tax your land that you already own that uh, does nothing and that they never owned in the first place. Um, or even how we can own it, but I mean, you know, it's a game, so we're all playing the game, right? So we're paying to play, paying to play. But um, so, for my, my main property is 38.75 acres, not 40. I've been lying to you guys all this time. 38.75. Um, first of all, where did I find that land? Um, I'll go back to that. Ruralvacantland.com was a YouTube channel I'd watch a lot. I didn't find that land on there, but there's a guy on there. Ruralvacantland.com. And I just started watching this cat, and he was, you know, he had a green screen, bald in hair. He was, he was a funny, quirky guy. And I was looking at some in Arkansas and Oklahoma, and you know, wherever. I mean, just other places that I thought had a little more freedom and a little less politics and a little bit uh, less cost of living. And basically, it was cost of living. The politics, I mean, I don't go into that too deep. I really think the entire government should be just dismantled down to zero and do like a, I don't know, uh, two men enter, one man leaves cage match or something. I don't, I don't know. It's uh, two women enter, one woman leaves. I mean, there's, there's really no right way to do it. It's a, it's a total joke. Uh, so I don't get into that too much. I would love to have a channel just for that. I'd probably be monetized and making all kinds of money talking shit because people love that stuff, well, yin or yang. But, um, so I wasn't looking for, a, I, I didn't like California's politics, but it didn't affect me. I lived up in the mountains there. I rode dirt bikes wherever the hell I wanted to. 
um, you know, for instance, like a dirt bike, you got to go through a lot of jumps and through a bunch of hoops to be able to license your dirt bike to go ride. We're here, I can license a roller skate with a dirt bike motor and suspension if I want to. Uh, so in Arizona, Montana, South Dakota, a place like that, a lot easier. So I was looking for, on a political side, I was looking for that stuff, less restrictions, less fees, all that. So that's where I say, I guess, politics. Otherwise, I mean, 90% of uh, California's Republican, probably. So if you're conservative, you'd be surprised. I know no one would believe that. It's not a democratic state like people believe. It's just the people running it are Democrat, and the people who are um, manipulating the election results and uh, paying to play are you know, democratic or liberal alignment. So, so anyway, politics wasn't a big deal for me. It was cost of living. I wanted my kids to grow up somewhere where they can afford to live. Um, I currently live in a 1982 two bedroom, two bath, shitbox mobile home um i don't don't mind i lived in a motorhome for two and a half years before i moved out here i lived in a 2300 square foot house before that with a three-car garage and two acs and a tv in every room and uh had uh, half the garage full of motorcycles and half the garage full of gym equipment um trained professional athletes did all kinds of different stuff on the motorcycle industry so i've already i think lived that lifestyle and i uh, enjoyed it don't get me wrong i didn't never mind cranking ac until the bill showed up but I, I had plans in the future to get away from some of that municipality, some of that debt, and some of that overhead. Uh, the overhead over the top of my head as far as carrying the, the burden of all those costs. Also, I made a ton of money um, for my, you know, I have zero education. I dropped out of high school, um, started doing my own thing. If you watch any entrepreneurs out there, not any exceptions, these rules are probably uh, very, very, very uh, many. But you, people that, I'm not seeing you drop out of high school to be this successful, but Someone that's bored with typical uh, education but not challenged has already got their mind on 10 different things like I did. Um, school was in my way. It was slowing me down. It was keeping me from doing things I wanted to do, whether they are successfully uh, things that would, be would help success in my future is debatable. Um, but right, racing dirt bikes and traveling and uh, making quick money and following dreams and uh, riding, the, riding the lightning a little bit. So just enjoying life. Um, so anyway, so background wise, I made really good money, six figure income since I was in my 20s, all the way up until my 40s. Um, I held maybe two years of my life where I didn't make good money when the maybe 2008 the economy collapsed. And uh, this last boom with the zombie apocalypse, my money went through the roof. So uh, I will be opposite into that. But um, anyway, getting back, the reason I mentioned that, not to say, oh, I made a bunch of money. I don't make it now, I can tell you that much. Not that kind of money. Um, I can, I can go back into it, I have no desire. It's even up here, I mean, my little tiny town I'm at, 20 minutes from my house, I can make a buck 50 a year, uh, five days a week, it's crazy. Um, that stuff's everywhere. So if you want a job, don't stay where you're at, they're everywhere. They'll say, oh, I gotta retire here, I've been put all this time. Transfer to where you wanna be with that same company or go in the same field, you know? Take your uh, retirement uh, plan independent, get away from your, your work, you know, go through an independent company, that's what you're relying on. Um, I don't subscribe to that stuff, so, you know, but I understand how it works, it's not for me. Um, Telling a 40 foot container ripping down this canyon. They're going to uh, Lower Salt Creek, uh, I believe, bridge down here or canyon or something like that. This is steep, so I've got the trailer break through the roof. This is a 40 footer, it's about 8,900 pounds uh, behind me pushing my dually around. So, and you got to drive out of this thing, but it's, it's an hour and a half shorter than the typical route I take. And I had to go out of Tucson prison today to pick up a container for a local school. Anyway, so getting back to it, um, I wanted my kids to not have to make if my kids make two hundred thousand dollars a year, whether it's playing video games, or streaming, or they start a business, or they work for the local whatever company, or the ultimate baddest sales or marketing or parts guy, or whatever. I mean, no matter what kind of money they make there or here, that money will go. It's crazy money up here. So, and that could change obviously with time. You know, the dollar loses its value. There's inflation. There's all that good stuff. I mean, you know, there's the economic collapse. Um, you know, uh, supply and demand, things like that. But um, I didn't want my kids to have to make $150,000 minimum per year so they can afford you to have a, 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 a less than, or a more than mediocre, you know, uh, mediocre, sorry, uh, existence down there, you know? I didn't want them to have to go in zero down to finance a car. I didn't want them to go with minimal FHA financing on a house. I didn't want them to, you know, have credit card debt because they can't, they have to carry it over every single month because they can't afford to pay it off like I do every 30 days and use the points to my advantage. So um, I wanted them to have the freedom to make stupid decisions, even with good tutelage and uh, and learn from those mistakes, but not suffer from those mistakes. So, so that's a lot of my, my whole thing of being up in Arizona. Um, so that's why we're up here and it was mainly, like I said, well, 
95% of it was cost of living, just to get my kids, you know, into a place that was more affordable uh, for me, and later on, as they become more independent for them. Um, trail mix. So, getting back to land. I look for rural land. Everyone asks about how deep is your water, all that good stuff. I didn't plan on drilling a well. It just so happens that my land has an aquifer throughout the mountain range there that people hit water between 150 to 200 feet. And some of them drink it right out of the damn ground, crystal clear, better than anything you're drinking uh, from your municipalities, I can guarantee you that. So, um, so that's not a big deal. I got lucky on that because it wasn't a focal point. I plan on doing water catchment, and I still will be doing water catchment on the main property. Um, I can haul water, I can go buy water if I need to, but I wanted to rely on no one but myself in the future. So by the time I'm 55, that property will be growing crops, we'll have some livestock, We'll have enough water catchment on there to provide water for a year with just minimal rain, let alone minimal monsoons. We get a lot of rain. It could be, you know, there could be years where it didn't come through. And let's put it this way. If I ever had a well in the property or desired a well, I would rent the equipment and drill it myself. So, and people are like, oh, you're crazy. And he's talking about, you know, I mean, people did not always rely on someone else that has more intelligence, more money, and more smarts, <laughs> more, more quickness to provide every single thing. Some people used to provide for themselves. I mean, our great grandparents are probably the last era that got to feel that. I know my parents were nothing close. They were the, you know, convenience, uh, convenience of the, the test run of convenience and then we're the product of convenience. It's disgusting. So um, anyway, so if I ever wanted to drill a well, I would figure it out. I would buy the equipment, rent the equipment, borrow the equipment, um, everything besides steal the equipment. So. So if I need that, I can, but the idea of that property is still sufficient. So getting back to property cost, that property was $1,000 per acre on average, not comps as in comparable sales, but comps as in comparable advertising pricing. So with that being said, I don't really care about that number. That number doesn't mean anything to me. Um, when I sold my house in California, that number mattered because people are looking for uh, conventional loans on that property. So they gotta see kind of what things are going for there to, to convince the bank that they can borrow unbelievably hundreds of thousands of dollars that they don't have to go buy a home they can't afford technically. I mean, you say, well, I can afford the payment. If you can't buy the house, you can't afford the house. If you can't buy it outright, you cannot afford the house. You, with a silent partner, who makes a heavy interest rate or heavy interest uh, percentage or heavy profit percentage off of you, even if the interest rate's low over the course of time, is the bank or the lender. Now you and the lender together can afford the house, but technically it's their house until the very day you pay it off. And then for you know, the property. Um, so getting back to that, it's up beyond that tangent, um, my property would have been roughly 40 grand because it's roughly 40 acres. And that was pretty standard asking price in the area. They shot up to about 60, even 75 for raw property in my same area at the peak of the, the zombie craziness. Um, I don't think a lot of people got those numbers. I do know a couple of people I know in town that uh, put a little tiny house on maybe a 40 acre property, uh, made some small improvements and sold their property for like 120, 150. So they just found the right person that wanted to already have a manufactured home, I mean, a, a shed built home with a water storage. I mean, 30 grand worth of stuff on a $20,000 property and some people netted 150,000 to sale on that. So I can't, can't hate the player, hate the game. But uh, so my property, I was a cash buyer, um, hard to get a loan on property. I, there was no intention of buying. Like I said, if I, if I didn't have the money, I would have just stayed living in my motorhome, uh, dirt bagging and kind of moving around or, or paid a minimal space rent or campsite rent to keep my, my output minimum, at a minimum while I saved the money to buy the land I wanted. Um, I bought my cash. I made an offer. Mine was at thirty-nine thousand originally, down to thirty-six. I think he brought it down to yeah, it was thirty-six. I offered fifteen thousand dollars for it. Um, they didn't even respond. So uh, people always ask me, how do you get these deals? You always get these great deals. You're just the deal master. Well, you, if you can speak the dialect of whoever you're talking to, mine happens to be English. So if you can say, I'm offering you fifteen thousand dollars, you can get that deal too. I didn't get a little strong arm, I didn't use psychology warfare. I just made an offer, you know, and the guy didn't respond. Um, I gave up on that property after a couple uh, couple weeks on hearing nothing back and my realtor reached out and the real, her, their realtor said, no, they're not interested. I did use a realtor because I don't know land uh, legality. So um, if I was gonna do an owner finance or an owner direct purchase, I would use what's called a title company. I would go to the local title company. I use Arizona title, or sorry, lawyer's title of Arizona 
Cholo, Arizona, and I can bring them documentation, and they can look it over, and I can pay them a couple hundred bucks to be my representative as my title company if I was buying off someone else. And normally if you do that, the person selling it to you is going to say, well, I don't want to pay the fees for that because I just want to save my land. You might have to pay their 200 dollars fee. So I think I paid even my closing cost on my main property. I think that was the closing deal when I finally got my main property going back to that. The guy wanted me to pay his closing cost to take accept my deal. It was 180 bucks. So uh, we we're not even splitting hairs. It was like 180 bucks. I mean, not that I got money just blown out, but I mean that's yeah. I'm not going to let that stand away in my property. So going back to mine, offer 15. Nothing happened. I started looking at other properties. I made some offers from other properties in the area, and I made them all low. It was before the zombie apocalypse really kicked in hard, and people uh, the economy wasn't going through the roof. I mean, not the economy, the inflation. Um, so things weren't popping off. There wasn't a whole lot to stand on that. It was just, I just saw a bunch of rural properties that needed a ton of uh, advancements, right? And zero done to them. Made a couple other offers, looked at a couple other states as well. And then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give Arizona one more try. I was using realtor.com and I still use it to this day. So realtor.com, no affiliation. They seem to have some of them, at least in Arizona where I'm at, in other, other states, but Arizona for sure, Compared to the realtor I deal with, which is Adventure Realty in Sholo, Adventure Realty, kind of fell hand in hand with all my Adventure Ready stuff, but um, I've used them for all three of my properties. I use the same gal, Christy over there, Christy Smith, super nice gal. Because um, I don't know Realty, I have her do all the paperwork and I just pay on the fees. But um, their website has properties on it that I get excited about and I look at realtor.com, they're not available. Because a lot of these realty companies are not up to date because they're so busy for a while or they're just lackadaisical. So, Realtor.com over Zillow and all those other things like that. If you're looking for land, I find Realtor.com is very useful. You can map an area, then take the map off and go anywhere you want to, zoom in or Google Earth it. Um, if you want more information on land, when you get on there, look up um, look up the parcel number on there or the APN number and go to the local county assessor's um, site. So if I go to Apache County, a county assessor site and I see something in Apache County, I enter the APN or the parcel number in there, I can look up who owns that currently, even if it's not even for sale. And that's actually how, you know, I've, I've made offers on things like that as well. Um, but you can also look at what the person bought it for. My brother's in the, in the midst of purchasing a property right now. He came out a couple weeks ago, we looked at uh, several properties with him, uh, or he looked at several, I looked at one, one or two with him. Um, I was able to look up, you know, he was using the realtor.com and the websites and all that stuff. Uh, you know, different, you know, different YouTube's things like that. But I was able to find from Realtor.com the one he liked, or several. Look up on the county assessor's office or um, online site, find out exactly what that owner paid for that property. It's all public knowledge. My neighbors know what I paid for all my properties if they want to look you up. You know my name before I even met them. So nosy neighbors, but understandable. I'm nosy too. I want to know who's living by you. It's different out here. Um, or different when you're rural. But yeah, so I was able to look up what my, what my what the property was sold for a few years back that my brother was looking at, or the couple he was looking at. And you can gauge your price on that too. Um, I don't do that either. I mean, he was a cash buyer, so I told him, you know, they were, once again, they were like 40 grand, so he offered them much less um, to get the property. Going back to my property, I offered 15 grand, got back on realtor.com, saw a fresh ad that looked like the property that I, or looked beautiful. Not realizing it was the exact same property had already made an offer on, they just took new pictures, the, the realtor did, not mine, but one of, the, one of the realtors she worked with, and it just spoke to me again. I said, you know what, second time I've seen this ad, two different ads, but second time I've seen this property on, on ad, seen it in person already, I like it, I'm gonna put a final offer in. Um, I offered, uh, I'm getting confused my numbers down, because my brother's numbers, I offered $19,000. Sight unseen, no, no, or I've seen it, but no, no qualms, no rebuttals, no negotiation. That's my first or my second final offer. Take it or leave it. So, and that was 19, like including all everything. The only thing they added was that $180 closing fee. That that was the that was the splitting hairs. So I paid $19,180 for 37 or 38.75 acres, which I call 40. But that gives you an idea. I guess it's horrible for a seller to listen to my video because he's gonna say, well, you're a dick and you half price things, but the low ball, they call it. A low ball is a very relative term. I see it all the time in cars and lifted vans and motorcycles and people are like, don't low ball me. I know what I got. You know, say, oh, I got this uh, van, it's this, this, and this, it's worth 30 grand. 
or they ask 30 grand for it, but the van's worth 20, then you offer them 15, and they're like, you're a low baller. Well, no, you just put your price too high. So uh, your price is not uh, not accurate to the marketplace or what you're offering. So, and that's relative. Like I said, it's different when you're looking at rural land. But anyway, um, I would try to do it cash. If you do it owner finance, bring it to a title company, work it out with a title company just so you have a, an actual document on record contract. I've seen a couple of deals go sour out here between friends and people I've met and stories I've heard. So you don't want to deal with that bullshit. So, uh, but yeah, cash is the best way to go if you got cash. Um, if you're looking at properties that are 40 grand and you don't have 40 grand, you're like, well, I gotta get a loan. I don't look at that property as 40 grand. If I look at a $40,000 property, if I look at any property, I think there's a 10 to 50% margin in there of leeway with the right seller, you know, and the right buying combination. So that might be horrible. People are that you're crazy. That doesn't work. It's like the, you know, I guess, you know, if you go to a bar and ask enough girls to hook up with you, you get slapped 20 times and one will take you home. But, uh, you know, I think people look at that equation. I don't do it to be rude. I just, this is what I have to work with, you know? I buy cars the same way. Someone wants 15 grand for a car, and I got eight grand that, that's in my piggy bank and spendable. I'll let them know straight up, hey, you know, I'm nowhere near your price. If it has this, this, and this, and this, I think it's worth eight grand. You know, if you're interested in entertaining that, that conversation, I'll come by and look at it. Otherwise, I won't waste your time. And if they say, you know what, just come by and check it out. Maybe you'll like it and pay me more, or maybe you, you, know, you point out some things that make it worth that, you know? I mean, that sounds crazy, but I do it all the time. And I go buy the car for eight grand, and I you know, use it for a couple of years and sell it for 15. No, that's just, uh, I, I modify my stuff, so I put a lot of money into it. But uh, anyway, so land-wise, make that offer. Uh, for my brother looking at 40 acre properties, he said he doesn't have the 40 grand laying around, you know, which is fine. Not everyone has 40 grand laying around. And he makes plenty of money. He just got normal bills. He has a mortgage and he has a nice car and he has toys and stuff like that. So um, he has some, some outgoing uh, monthly expenditures. Um, I told him, on, well, let's put this way. The property he was looking at was 39,000. Then it got drowned down to 36, 32. I think it was at 28 or 26. Very similar to my property and same size and everything. Beautiful property, or you know, the one he, he ended up uh, in contract with. But I think he ended up paying um, somewhere in that 18, 19 grand range as well. Off, you know, I, I suggested for me to offer there. I mean, when you offer a low amount, if the person doesn't want to deal with you, then you probably hurt their feelings, you know, and, and hurt their, and it's not an emotional thing for me, I'm just making a purchase. If your realtor doesn't want to make that offer, then get another realtor. Uh, my realtor was embarrassed by me, I'm sure, the first couple of times she dealt with me, now she's, I've done three properties with her and sent my brother through them, their company, and suggested them to tons of different people, so they probably didn't make a ton of money off of me, but I've done a lot of, I, I'm a talker, so the word gets out there, so... Anyway, um, in the conversation starter, so if I offer you someone 15 grand on a thirty, you know, six thousand dollar property or thirty thousand dollar property is a half price, the realtor's embarrassed by it. People think what a jerk. If the guy, come, guy or gal comes back and you know and says, hey, that doesn't work, but maybe I'm at twenty, you just drop ten thousand bucks off the asking price, and it might put you into a ballpark of what you can afford. Where before you're already canceling yourself out and we're even you lose inside of your dream because the price was beyond, you know your champagne shopping on a beer budget. So I'm always on a beer budget. I don't care how much champagne we're cracking. <laughs> so if I have a good month, I buy something cheap. You know, I'm not, I'm always looking for $5,000 piece of land, $30,000 piece of land, $15,000, 40 acre piece of land. Um, obviously I'm not finding them all the time because I haven't bought more recently. Um, I'm still on the idea of buying more land, expanding my land portfolio, you call it. And I'm not expecting to get rich off that stuff. Most of them will probably keep. I'll probably just pass it all down to my kids and they can have it. Hopefully it's valuable to them one day when I'm long gone. So, but anyway, I know this is all over the place. I call my videos, but I guess what I'm telling you, try and buy your land cash. If you do owner finance, go to a title company so you have something in writing. Um, they'll do the due diligence. I had a title problem with one of my, my properties where someone else got added the title from a previous uh, title. Weird, uh, like months later, and I was able to call them and go, hey, that, you know, 300 bucks I paid or 180 dollars I paid, whatever it was, I need this fixed. And they went and fixed it immediately within 30 days, popped right back up and was all taken care of. Uh, you know, it was just a type, type, typo error, but I mean, at the same time on the, on the county assessor map. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, you get something like that, someone pays the tax on that, who knows, maybe take over ownership or partial ownership. But anyway, so it's worth going to a title company, I think, and having that done properly. If you're financing a big piece of land with a huge house and all stuff, like I just don't think that's the way to go rural. That's what you're trying to do. Uh, if you're going rural, uh, the water table is important. Um, the restrictions are important. I don't go over all that stuff on this channel. People ask me all the time. Do your due diligence. 
look into the county. Uh, you can call the county right now and say, do I need to have a septic tank? Do I need a permit for this? Can I park an RV on there for a million years and never build a house? Can I build out of raw materials on my property? Can I, is, you know, I cut down a tree on my property and build a bridge? I mean, whatever. You can call them with all those boring, monotonous uh, questions. And I'm not saying break the rules. And people have even mentioned on here, like, you know, like, yeah, it's because of people like that that we got these restrictions. Like, I'm not here on earth for another man or woman to tell me how to live. Um, we were all born free. For some reason, we get stamped with this freaking barcode number, a social security number on day one, and we become property of the state, property of the federal government. Uh, we become tax slaves to our job and to our to the tax system. I'm not into that. So um, I'd say avoid that stuff as much as you can. Avoid the taxes, avoid the bureaucracy, avoid the permitting. Uh, for instance, like I'm gonna get a septic permit for my main property and my other small property that has no, that's rural right now. Um, I'm gonna pull that permit myself, I'm gonna do the job myself, but I'm gonna have a permit so that way if there's ever a sanitation question, at least I'm covered there. Building wise, I'm gonna build whatever the hell I want to. Um, if they have a problem, then we'll take it up with them. I'll ask for forgiveness later. So not looking to uh, to, to go out there and wave the, the flag of like, uh, for me it's saying I need help, I don't. Um, I've never called the police for help in my life. I've never called the fire department for help in my life. Um, I'm not calling the, the permit police for help in my life. Um, I call friends or family or I figure it out myself. You know, I mean, I figure most things out myself. I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy to figure it out. Um, and yeah, does that work in modern day society? Clearly not. I mean, 90% of the population is relying upon some government program or some handout or they're going the hamster wheel of the same job over and over and you know, oh, thank you for that. There's, the, there's your percentage government. I mean, like, it's crazy. Uh, we're getting extorted daily and we're still just happily just handing that money over. Here you go, here you go, here you go. We should have revolted a long time ago. Uh, we have a tyrannical government we haven't overthrown and I don't know what's, what we're waiting on. But um, anyway, so yeah, that was kind of about land. If you want to buy land or if you have questions, throw them in the comment section. Negative comments will just get a negative response, a smart ass response. I'm okay with those too. They help the algorithm. So if people want to say bad things on the channel, and I, you know, I say something bad back and they respond like five comments later, people get directed to that uh, comment thread. So it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Plus I'm a smart ass and I, I don't want to take shit for nobody. So, uh, but yeah, positive comments are great. I'm a positive person. I come across as a pessimist. I'm a realist. Realists live in reality, so it's hard for us to be all happy, cheery all the time. Um, reality is a very solid brick in the face sometimes. So, but if you know what reality is, it allows you to circumnavigate around a lot of the bullshit and really actually enjoy your time that you have here and enjoy what you can, can do here uh, while you're here and the people you want to be around. So, reality is what I exist in. So, yeah, if you have any comments, go ahead and throw them in there. If you have questions, throw them in there. If it's permit related, I won't answer those, or I'll just tell you to call your municipalities because I just that's not the, what the channel's about. And I don't want you to do something wrong because I said skirt this or do this or do that. If you want to follow every single permit from the just like you would do when you're in California, oh, I'm going to pull a miracle government, you know, you can ask for a permit for everything. Uh, most people didn't move out here for that. And not that we're trying to. Um, do things illegally we're trying to just do things i mean it's freedom you just do what you do what you know is best do what you know is right build things the way you know is proper well there's there's good bad there's wrong and right uh we don't need the bureaucracy we don't need a tax um i don't know how many taxes we've paid over the last 60 years to change the environment it sure hasn't worked yet oh it's getting warm it's getting cold it's changing you know i mean everything in this world is run by a government and somehow a tax can always change that problem yet that money's not accounted for and goes right out the back door and into these fuckers pockets and we don't have any way to hold a check and balance system to hold them accountable and see a manifest report where that money goes so why give them more you know why give them any so live for yourself live free take care of the ones you create you know if you create a family member uh son or daughter take care of them if they're past 18 years old don't kick them in the curb like society tells you to. Use your own discretion, you know? I hope my kids want to be around me till I'm long gone. You know, obviously if they have a family and stuff like that, I'm not gonna make them all live with me. <laughs> but I didn't buy 40 acres to kick them off it. They can go take those three acres over there and build a damn mansion for all I care. So um, plan accordingly, I think. You know, like I said, take care of the ones you create. If you brought some people in this world, you're responsible for them. Not till they're 18, forever. You know, you are responsible. They had no choice to come in this world. You brought them in here. You gave them the gift of life, or something gave them the gift of life. The aliens popped it into someone's belly. Um, but at the same time, they had no choice in the matter. So, 
why prescribe to society's normal structure, give them a different outline if you choose to, or if you're living a different outline, and uh, try and give them the freedoms you didn't have, try and give them the opportunities you didn't have, uh, try and make their lives better than yours, and hopefully they'll become better people than you were, or I was, you know? That's the ultimate thing, is to know I'm a better dad than my dad ever was by a thousand times over. You know, my dad did, did a damn good job, as an adult, he was horrible. He's been a horrible dad as an adult. He was a great dad as a kid, he, but he also just kind of went through the process. And you know, there's no no manual for it, so you can't really say someone did it right or wrong. But um, you know, if you're a good person, you know what's right and what's wrong. How to treat a person, how to treat a child, how to teach someone, um, how to protect someone, how to provide for someone. Um, that comes natural. If it doesn't come natural, it's because you're just a shitty person. So um, anyway, that's a whole other video all within itself. Scars, just kidding, I don't have scars. But yeah, take care of the ones you create. Try and live a little bit freer. Get out of this freaking matrix, out of the society bullshit. They matrix, they call it, I'm using a term because everyone's using that these days, but get out of society's pre-prescribed pre bullshit. Go live, man, it's it's ticking. I could be gone tomorrow. I'm glad I shared with this with you today. I could be gone tomorrow. I tell my kids I love them every single day, you know? You never know, do what you can right now and if you have a goal or plans and they're 10, 15 years out, cut it down. 55, I'm retired. That's 10 years earlier than anyone watching this channel for the most part. Well, not anyone. A lot of my people watch my channel on the same page as me or get the hell of the rat race. But 10 years earlier than my parents uh, uh, gave as an example. And I might go earlier than that. I'm 48 next week. Uh, 48 years old, already got a white beard. I got uh, kidney issues, liver issues, diabetic issues. I got all the issues, guys, that are starting to show up. And I knew they would come. I knew naturally my body would decompose or have problems and health issues because it's just nature and our food system that we shoved into our body for 40 some odd years, bad toxic food, toxic water, toxic environment, toxic people, stress, um, making chasing the dollar. I knew it was coming. So I tried to beat it. I'm right at the cusp of it. So I'm going to enjoy my next, you know, 10, 15, 20, maybe 30 years, probably not, probably 20 years if I'm lucky. Um, 68, yeah, I mean, if I get 70, I'd be pretty surprised just with the foods that we eat, the environment we're around, the stress levels and things like that, and toxicity that we ingest into our body. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to do what I can and make a plan. If you have a plan, that's good. If you can shorten that plan, even better. You know, get out there and start living, like, immediately. Right on, guys. If that helped you with land, great. If it helped you with anything else, great. It just upset you. Mission in the comments. <laughs> so, you need some tough love? Give me a call. Jason. Thanks, guys.